All right, we have now entered the next section, and what we're going to do now is calculate integrals that go off to infinity. And this is a really big topic. In fact, I'm only going to show you one technique called improper integrals. Uh, I'm going to show you this technique, and but just know that you, you'll study this more in calculus too, and this is a much bigger topic than just this one technique I'm going to show you. Your first instinct when I ask you to take an infinite integral should be, well, isn't the answer always infinity? You know what I mean? Because you're, you're taking an infinite integral, and integrals are about finding area, so how is the answer not infinity every time? And the answer is, well, it depends. If you're taking an integral, and say that it's crashing into zero as it goes, so say the, the, the curve is falling and falling and falling, it is possible that it gets small enough fast enough that the limit will actually converge. And when I say converge, I mean it'll always approach a number, but it'll never get bigger than that number. In that way, it's just like a limit. And in fact, limits are how we are going to solve these. And so if the curve gets small enough fast enough, it will actually converge to a limit of area. However, if it doesn't get small enough fast enough, then it will diverge to infinity, meaning that as you keep go taking the curve on forever and ever, um, the area will just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger forever and eventually explode to infinity if you do it for long enough. That's the idea. Let's see how to actually solve it. So you can see how we have 1 over 10x squared, which would be a curve that, I don't know, kind of looks like this as you move to the right. And uh, we're going to see if it converges or not. And the way you do that is by replacing the infinity, because we can't do math with infinity. But what we can do is we can replace the infinity with a variable. So I'm going to just replace it with b. okay? And now what we're going to do is everything is the same. We're going to just replace the infinity with a b. And to deal with this fact, we're going to put a limit on the outside as b goes to infinity. So that's, it looks like it's the same thing, but what's cool is that with limits, we can actually do math, rearrange things, and then evaluate the limits to see what the limit will actually equal. So that's really nice. So let's go ahead and do it. Are you ready? We take the integral of 1 over 10x squared. Now, what is this going to equal? This is going to equal 1 over 10x. And let's think about this for a second. If I take the derivative of 1 over 10x, that's going to be negative 1 over 10x squared, because the negative comes out in front, and we decrease the power of the x by 1. So what that means is I need to slap on a negative sign here. So if I move the 10x upstairs, that'll be 10x to the negative 1. Take the derivative, the negative 1 comes down, hits that negative to make it positive. And the x to the negative 1, we decrease it by 1 to get 10x, 10 to the negative x, x to the negative x squared. So the 2 comes down into the denominator. I didn't do a very good job of explaining that. Let me just show you. 10x to the negative 1 becomes negative 1 times 10x to the negative 2 when you take the derivative. Negative 1 comes down. This negative 1 drops. And so you get negative 1, you get 1 over 10x squared. So if there's a negative in front, it's a positive there. Still didn't do a very good job of explaining that. Just trust me, if you take the derivative of this, you'll get this. Okay? We still have our limit b going to infinity, and we have this evaluating from 2 to b. Okay? So that's the idea. Let's go ahead. We'll do the limit last. So let's go ahead and see what this is equal to. This will be, if we evaluate it, the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 over 10b minus negative 1 over 20 because 10 times 2 is 20. So I put the b in, I put the 2 in. These two things become pluses, two negatives. Now, by the way, this is in parentheses. The limit will be affecting everything. So what happens as we take the limit as b goes to infinity? Well, this b goes to infinity, but because it's in the denominator, that means that this piece right here will always approach a zero. When we evaluate the limit, this thing will get closer and closer to zero forever. The more we go, the more accurate it gets. So that means that our final answer, after evaluating the limit, 
is just 1 over 20. So this area right here, if this is the curve 1 over, um, if this is the curve 1 over 10 x squared, uh, or x squared being on the bottom, sorry, 1 over 10 x squared, the actual area of this, this curve gets small enough fast enough that the area, no matter how far you go out, the area will never get bigger than 120, 1 over 20. And so we say that that is the area. It's the result of a limit, as is all of calculus. That's it. That's all we got to do. Uh, let's do a second example, and then we'll take a break. Here we have the limit of 0 to infinity of 16e to the negative 4x. Again, you rewrite this as the limit as b goes to infinity of 0 to b e to the negative 4x dx. So that's how you set it up. We turn it into a limit. That way we can rearrange this. And then when we're done, we can take the limit and see what happens. Let's go ahead and take the integral. This is the limit as b goes to infinity of e to the negative 4x over negative 4. Uh, that's the antiderivative or integral of e to the negative 4x. We've done several examples of this if you want to check prior videos. Um, this will now need to be evaluated from 0 to b. Okay, let's do that. That's going to be e to the negative 4b over negative 4. And that's putting in the b minus e to the negative 0 over negative 4. And I, I forgot my limits. The limit as b goes to infinity being on the outside of that. Okay, so there we go. Let's see how this works out. I'm going to rewrite this in the following way. These two minuses turn into pluses. So this is going to be 1 over 4e to the 4b with a positive exponent plus 1 over e to the 0, 4 times 4. Okay, so that's me rewriting it. And I again forgot my limit. I always forget it. This limit is applying to everything. So when we activate the limit now, because this e to the 4b is in the denominator, this value right here will get closer and closer and closer and closer to 0 forever as we get closer and closer to infinity. Notice I never says it equals 0. I said it always approaches 0 because that's what a limit is all about. Now e to the 0 is 1. So we get... Um, 1 over 4. Now, I realize I just made a mistake for this whole problem <laughs> that you've probably been asking the entire time is what happened to this 16? Well, the 16 should have been out in front the whole time. So I can pull the 16 out from the limit and the integral. So I'm just going to put the 16 here, 16 here, 16 here, 16 here. So this is 1 fourth times 16, which equals 4, which is the whole answer. So 4 is the final answer. Sorry, I left off the 16. Just pretend it was out in front the whole time. You can pull the 16 out of a limit and an integral. So you can do that for any constant. So we'll stop right there. Sorry about that. Um, all right, we'll finish with those two examples. We'll do another one in the next video.